All right. Episode one of Young Strength, a Zoom series aimed to connect young strength coaches in the professional industry and explore ideas and concepts around strength and conditioning as a profession. Uh, I'm your host, Lockie, and this is my first guest, episode one, with my good friend, Andrew Knuven. Have I said it right? I feel like I always got scared saying your last name. It's it's Knuven. Yeah, Knuven? You're close. See, you're close. Knuven. Uh, feel free to, to introduce yourself and sort of give everyone a, a bit of a rundown of you. Yeah, so like you said, uh, my name is Andrew Knuven. Um, so I kind of started my strength and conditioning work um, at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, I started with their Olympic sports program, doing baseball, diving, swim, uh, and volleyball, and was fortunate enough to be brought on uh, to do men's basketball in the fall. Uh, and then after that, I made my way down to Austin, uh, where I did the Texas Olympic sports internship in the summer, and then was fortunate enough again to be brought on in the fall for uh, women's basketball, which is where I'm currently at. Awesome. And um, starting off the questions, I guess the, the the key one that's always the why. Why did you get into this profession? So I think for me, uh, where it all started, uh, I played football in high school and um, in Ohio, that's all there is to do. When you play football, you go in, you practice, and then off season, you're in the weight room pretty much all the time. So uh, I kind of fell in love with weights. Um, my strength coach at the time was a, a big role model for me. So I think he kind of pushed me in that direction. Uh, I ended up getting some advice from him on how to start in the field. And we just kind of kept talking back and forth until uh, I made it a reality there at uh, the University of Cincinnati. And in, in terms of the role of the strength and conditioning coach when it comes to individual sport, uh, individual teams, individual sports, uh, team sports, um, how do you feel the importance of, of the role is? So I think it's going to be uh, highly dependent on the athlete and what sport they're, what, what sport you're talking about. So I think, um, you know, kind of the cliche answer, it depends. Uh, there are for sure some things that you can do to help. Obviously we know that uh, things like resistance training and endurance training do have physiological adaptations that occur. So there is something that you can do. Uh, whether or not it's beneficial depends on who your strength coach is, if they know what they're doing and uh, what that athlete's role in their sport is. Obviously, it was great to to work alongside you. And that gave me a really great perspective into a lot of things over in Texas. But what kind of mindset or, or attitude do you feel that you try to follow when it comes to coaching? I would say, uh, especially right now, being an intern uh, every day is just a job interview. So you have to go in there, give it uh, your best effort every day. Um, as far as the attitude towards, uh, training philosophy, I think I try to stick to, uh, how can we, a, uh, move better, feel better, and eventually get to get to playing better, I think is the, the key concept that you have to follow. Um, my kind of, uh, my arc coming into strength and conditioning was, you know, I love weights. So everyone needs to love weights and, you know, get big and strong. Uh, but in reality, that's just not how it works. Um, you have to chase that desired adaptation and how that looks is going to be different from athlete to athlete and sport to sport. And that can be a pretty hard sell, can't it? I mean, I know there's definitely some athletes that, that we worked with that loved the weight room and probably loved it a little too much. And there were some that just didn't want to be there at all. For sure. In terms of mentors, I, I mean, I think you've definitely had a, a really great spread, especially across the US. Do you think that there's been one person that stood out to you as, as sort of that key mentor. I think a lot of, um, I heard a saying once it's uh, your, your opinions are going to be role modeled after the last smart person you talk to. So I think right now for me, it's uh, Zach Zillner with the women's basketball team. Uh, there's just kind of the, a way that he approaches training that I think um, he gets buy-in from his athletes uh, because of his interpersonal skills, but he also gets buy-in from the staff because the staff, see that the athletes are coming in and they enjoy what they're doing and they're they're feeling better moving better playing better all that stuff so i think right now for me uh zach zillner is um kind of the role model what i'm trying to model myself after right now definitely and i mean you know i, I was pretty lucky to obviously have a little bit of time with zach as well and um there's a, a coach over here in australia craig bellamy and he used the quote uh, hard work gets you lucky and i think that zach very much shows a, a hard work ethic but he shows it in a very relaxed way, especially when you look at the contrasting personas of a lot of American strength coaches. He's uh, 
definitely a little bit more of like a cool cat. For sure. <laughs> He's definitely yeah. got that kind of personality where people gravitate toward him, which is awesome. And in terms of like yourself dialing back there, where do you feel that you've grown in the profession over the last few years? Kind of like I, what I touched on before. I think when I first started, it was all about, you know, I love weights. I love getting bigger and stronger. So that's, that's what everyone needs to do. Uh, and I think very quickly I evolved um, at Cincinnati. Um, one of my mentors there, Chaz, he kind of told me, you know, that's great for you and your personal training, but that's not what these kids need. Most of them, like if you look at uh, elite athletes in a multitude of different sports, they don't look like Ronnie Coleman. They don't look like power lifters. They don't, they don't need to do that stuff. They need to get, um, they need those physiological adaptations that help them get better at their sport. And that doesn't always entail lifting, uh, you know, super maximal weights, uh, eccentrics, uh, isometrics, what kind of fun training uh, principles you like to employ for yourself. And do you think that that was very much like that key learning uh, experience for you as a coach was sort of getting out of your own, I guess, comfort zone, your own shell when it came to training and really thinking about those concepts that maybe you don't use as frequently? I'd say um, that was a, a big one for sure. Um, as far as learning how to kind of separate myself from um what these athletes need, what, what the, uh, the client needs. Um, but I think as far as like best learning experiences, uh, those kind of came from Texas Olympic sports being surrounded by minds like, uh, Mike Hansen and Clint Morton, kind of their, their, their use of the Socratic method. It kind of gets you to dig deeper into what you're doing. Uh, because it, it's great to, to know you don't want to have your athletes powerlifting, right. But, but why don't you want your athletes powerlifting? What what happens when you powerlift that isn't ideal uh, for competition, right? In in the sport that they play. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head for the example of Clint. Like Clint is probably one of the strongest individuals I think you and I have both ever seen. But when you look at the way that he trains his athletes, he doesn't train the same way. Exactly. And I think that's because yeah. he has to meet the audience and the demands of that audience. Um, in terms of, of obstacles or, um, I guess, challenges that you may have experienced over the last few years, do you think there's any that have stood out as maybe something that's that's humbled you or something that's been a bit of that big eye opener um, that's really allowed you to, to grow more? I think uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges you'll face coming in uh, is, and I see this all the time um, when, when Zach gets DMs from aspiring strength coaches as well, but you kind of you kind of get into this false sense of confidence where you read a couple books and you think you're you're really smart and that puts you in a dangerous position on it's called the dunning kruger curve i'm sure you're familiar with it where you actually know very little but you think you know a lot and i think that is kind of an obstacle you have to overcome and i think that a lot of people end up not overcoming that obstacle and that's where you get uh strength coaches that are you know not as great as they could be. Mm. Uh, they're kind of stuck in their own mindset, uh, refusing to kind of get over that hump, get get a little bit further into that curve. Um, and for me, I think one of the biggest challenges that you don't really think about when you're talking about uh, commanding a weight room is kind of breaking out of your shell uh, using interpersonal skills. Um, like for me, for sure, like one of my biggest character traits is being an introvert. Um, so to prepare myself for that, I think um, I started personal training, getting uh, in with clients one on one, making those small, small, small changes at a time. And then just as far as overcoming that, getting in, coaching teams, being put in the hot seat, um, delegating responsibilities among the team. Uh, I think that's that's key to getting over your introversion is just to put yourself in scenarios you're not comfortable with. Well, I mean, in terms of, of all of that, you know, where do you think that you will progress going forward as a strength coach? You know, what, what do you think is the, I guess, that uncomfortable factor that you know that you need in order to excel in the field? I think it's just, uh, honestly, reps. Like, you you get in there every day, uh, like I alluded to uh, before. It's every day is a job interview. You have to go in there and put your best foot forward. Um, maybe you get put in a scenario where you do feel a little bit uncomfortable, but you have no option, but to push through, keep, keep going, learn from your mistakes and come back and try to do it better the next day. Yeah, for sure. And I, I kind of want to stay on that 
uh, every day is a job interview because I think definitely uh, my experience in the US was definitely a massive eye opener in terms of there is this whole different attitude when it comes to the US compared to Australia. And I, I mean, you know, everyone's very sort of happy go lucky in Australia and it's a fantastic thing that's very positive. Um, but that winning mentality that is sort of prevalent within the US, especially at Texas, um, you know, it's it's very much, a, you know, adopt or, or, or leave, um, which as as terrible as it may sound for some people, I think it's it's something that I resonated with really well once I sort of bought in and and I think that really reaped a lot of rewards in terms of my coaching. Would you say that was the same for you? Absolutely. So I, th I think um, that goes back into the comfort. If you're comfortable, you no, know, not winning, you could be, you could be, you know, a lot of places, but Texas is not one of those. Um, I think the the saying they have printed out on all the walls is the winning tradition of Texas will not be entrusted to the weak or the timid, you know, and I, I think that's, you know, full send like we need people like that manning manning the reins you know taking control um because that breeds com competition that breeds you know uh you yourself getting in and uh learning everything that you can making yourself a better you know, better version of yourself every day in terms of 2023 it's a new year any uh any goals in particular i know there's a uh, a certain date in september that's on the horizon absolutely so of course, that's my number one goal for 2023. Uh, it's actually going to be a huge year for me, hopefully. Uh, in September, like you alluded to, I will be getting married. Um, we're going to have our wedding in Covington, Kentucky. A little, um, It's a little bit south of Cincinnati, Ohio, where I'm from. Uh, but that'll be on the 29th of September. So that's everyone's invited. If you're, if you're everyone's in the area. invited, if you're watching, just come on down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's huge year for me. Um, on top of, you know, finishing up my master's degree here at Texas, um, we got to finish out the season here with women's basketball um, and then hopefully finding my first full time or paid gig somewhere here, uh, you know, getting started. Well, I couldn't think of anyone more capable, to be honest, but uh, let's get into the rapid fire questions. All right, let's do it. Yeah. So uh, number one, obviously living in Austin, breakfast taco or dinner taco? Gonna have to go with the breakfast taco, taco joint, steak and egg taco. That's the one. Uh, front squat or back squat? I'm gonna have to go with back squat. You know, just as someone who is a avid low bar squatter, I was, I've just never been able to get myself in a good position for a front squat. So I'm gonna have to go back squat. I respect that. Any any variation in particular? I know we uh, we used to tinker a lot with sort of single leg hat field and, and things like that when we were uh, on our lunch breaks. I do love I do love a good Hatfield squad just because it gives you that ability to bend over and use use a little bit more hip dominant style. I would say Hatfield squat's my number one right now. Ah, perfect. And uh, this this one's uh, probably more of an inside joke, but uh, rain or C four? Um, you know we, C4, we don't have rain in Australia. You don't have rain in Australia. We don't. Um, you have snow and some other inclement weather. Um. <laughs> Man, that's a tough one. I'm going to have to go with the rain. I think C4 has the market on the flavors, the options, but mm. I think rain has the better overall taste. What uh, What's your go-to flavor for rain? Rainbow Sherbert. Oh, that is it's good. It's a newer one, but that's it's yeah. a good one. I, I remember there was, I tried most of them um, when I was in Texas and I couldn't find two. It was like lychee and I think it was like a peach one. And I went to Hawaii and I found both of them and they were both uh, very underwhelming. But yeah, I'd have I to go with that the, rainbow shirt but again. I think the peach one is an older flavor that they discontinued or just don't make as much of them. Yeah. But I do it remember was, uh, having the peach one a while back. It's, it's yeah, it's not as good as the rainbow sherbet. So I'll leave yeah, it. Yeah, it was kind of more like tonic water. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's Maybe that's why they got rid of it. Yeah. It wasn't popular. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh. Well. Well, uh, look, Andrew, firstly, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it should be probably close to like nine o'clock in Texas right now. Um, a little bit past my bedtime. but Yeah, a little bit past your bedtime. I'm sure I'm keeping you away from that. But um, hey, look, thank you so much. Um, obviously, episode one of Young Strength. Um, great to have you on. I think we're hopefully getting Spider Mike on next week. So That'll see how he's going at, uh, at the University of Miami. Yes, sir. So, yeah. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, thank you so much, man. I, uh, I appreciate it.
we'll uh, we'll catch you next time. Definitely editing that part out. <laughs>